hello everybody. Uh, my name is David Payton and on behalf of the European Commission for the Control of Foot and Mouth Disease, I'd like to welcome you to this short video on aging foot and mouth disease lesions. Okay, so foot and mouth disease lesion aging is quite a useful skill for you to master because it can help you to choose the right samples to take from infected animals and it also can help you to build time windows which are very useful mechanisms for tracing the source and spread of the virus. So when and how it might have come onto a farm and when and how it might have left. So the way that this is done is, is first of all, you make an estimate of how old you think the foot and mouth disease lesion is. And then you can combine this with the knowledge that you should already have about what are the FMD incubation periods. Um, so it's between one and 14 days and about the pathogenesis of foot and mouth disease. So what you know about where a virus is in the body at different stages of the infection. So that can give you uh, an indication of when infection was introduced into the farm. And it can also tell you uh, when virus shedding is likely to begin. And it can tell you which are going to be the best samples to take uh, to look for viruses or when perhaps it's too late to take samples for viruses and when you can look for antibody. And the other thing you will need is you will need uh, to combine your uh, infection window with information that you collect from the farm about the contacts and the opportunities that they've been on the farm for virus to have entered the premises and to have left it. So you put all these things together and you have a very useful epidemiological tool. Okay, so what is the uh, lesion aging progression? So basically you start off with foot and mouth disease. The characteristic uh, lesion is a vesicle or blister that appears uh, within the epithelium at specific predilection sites, such as in the mouth, on the feet and on the teats. And to begin with, at day one, uh, the vesicle is characterized by a bulge with blanching of the surface epithelium. And within this um, a vesicle or blister, you get the formation of fluid. And that fluid is very rich in virus. And on day two, uh, the vesicle ruptures. And so you have the appearance of a freshly ruptured vesicle. And this is characterized by raw epithelium a clear edge to the lesion and no deposition of fibrin. And then you move to day three when the lesions start to lose their sharp demarcation and bright red surface color. And this is due to the beginning of the healing process. And this is characterized by also deposition of fibrin that starts. And then as you move to day four, you see that considerable fibrin deposition has occurred and regrowth of the epithelium is evident at the periphery of the lesion. When you get to around day seven, you have extensive scar tissue formation and healing has taken place. Uh, there may still be some fibrin depossession uh, present, but beyond seven days, you won't um, see much fibrin. So that's the sort of background and theory, but let's have a look at some uh, pictures and illustrations, which I think will be much more useful. But before I do that, just um, uh, a general uh, caveat about how you approach the, the lesion aging. And this is just to say to people, it's a good idea to try to be systematic. What people sometimes do is they take a quick look at a lesion, they see one or two features of it that stand out, and they try to immediately uh, guess the lesion age. It's better if you do it in a systematic way and really check all the different uh, lesion features against a little mental uh, checklist that you have in your mind. So you look at the surface, you look at the color, you look at the edges, etc., etc., And only then really put the information together to try to estimate the, the age. So ju don't jump to conclusions on first impressions is what I'm saying. And there is an app available from EUFMD that will help you to do this because um, being an app, it needs you to fill in various boxes about 
the different features. So it makes you do it in a systematic way, and it can also um, uh, serve as a way of helping you to work out the age at the end of it all. Okay, so here's a little cartoon uh, for the day one lesion. So this is the, the classic fluid-filled uh, vesicle. So this um, occurs because the virus is replicating in, in the basal layers of the epithelium where the live tissue is, and you're getting a lot of inflammation, cell death, and release of, of, of virus and buildup of fluid. So um, this is characterized by blanching of the epithelium, um, and you can see here these bulges on the surface of the tongue and you can see there's uh, uh, these will be full of fluid if you touch them, and um, uh, they have a slightly uh, blanched appearance. So, so the day one lesions are, are quite characteristic in, in foot and mouth disease. If we go to day two, then, what we've got now is a freshly ruptured vesicle. And so in the cartoon, this is emphasizing the fact that you have these uh, epithelial tags still present at the edges, even if um, some of the surface uh, epithelium has been lost. And, at, and you've now got release of fluid, but at the base you have this very red raw um, surface. So if we look at a, the real thing on, on a, a cow's dental pad, you can see here that you've got this very raw red base. And you can also have, you can see the sharp edges, and you can see that these, there are epithelial tags, bits of loose flaps of epithelium um, here that you could easily collect as samples. And there's no uh, fibrin uh, deposition. So this is a, a classic day two lesion. If we go to day three, and we have a look at the schematic, we can see the edges have become um, blunted, the tags have mostly been lost, we still have a fairly uh, red uh, base, but we now start to get the appearance of this yellowish or greyish fibrin. So if we look at this on an animal, this again is a dental pad of cow, we can see that the uh, fibrin, the, the epithelial tags have been lost, so you've got smooth edges all the way around, you've still got a very red raw um, particular lesion base or erosion base uh, and that signifies that the lesion is still quite a fresh and young one but you've got these um, patches of fibrin that are starting to appear um, they're not yet covering uh, the whole lesion but they're, they're present in places so that's an early sign of healing so this would be a characteristic of a day three lesion so moving on, um, by day four, you see in the schematic that we've got more extensive uh, coverage of the uh, lesion base uh, with fibrin. We also start to see that the epithelium starts to regrow from the edges. So you get uh, a loss of the crisp sharpness to the edge and the edge has a shoulder and you can see this gray ingrowing epithelium. And the epithelium will also regrow from the basal layer. And so you start to get a graying of the, the base of the vesicle. So if we look at that in real life, again, we have a, a dental pad in, in, in a cow's mouth. Uh, here's the tongue, here's the bottom inside the teeth. So you can start to see here that you've got this shoulder appearing at the edge of the lesion where the epithelium is regrowing, and you also have a regrowth of epithelium from the base. So it's starting to become grayer at the base and not so pink. And then in addition, you can see this fibrin, which is um, now more extensive um, over the surface of the lesion. And in this case, it's not as yellow as on the previous picture. So it can range in color from a a yellow to a, a grayish color. Some people find it difficult to distinguish fibrin from epithelial tags, but the uh, fibrin is, is more like a dense uh, jelly and tends to be uh, stuck over the surface of uh, the lesion rather than just attached to the edges in the case of um, epithelial tags. Uh, 
So if we progress on to around day six, um, healing is now advanced further. We have um, a further re-epithelialization from the edges of the lesion. We still often have a, con a considerable amount of uh, fibrin on the surface and progressively the base of the erosion is becoming grayer and less uh, red and pink. And so if we look at that again, here we see again another a dental pad. We have a number of different lesions here. Um, we can see that there's a, a extensive regrowth of epithelium. We're starting to get a contracture of the wound, so it's uh, starting to be pulled together at the edges. Um, the fibrin is looking much more organized as if it's been there for a long time and often um, extensively covers uh, the surface of the lesion. And you can see that even the, the base is still a little bit pink, but it's, it's again uh, starting to uh, be covered with new epithelium. When we move on to around day 10, by this stage, between day 7 and 10, depending on the size of the lesion, you normally get uh, a complete re-epithelialization, but the epithelium is thinner than the uh, original uh, epithelium that would have been present. And if there are papillae, for instance, in the tongue, these will not have grown to their full size. And you get a variable amount of scarring and contracture depending upon how deep the lesion is and whether the, the basal layer from which the epithelium has to regrow has been damaged or not. So here we can see a tongue at around uh, day 10. This is the dorsal surface of the tongue. We can see a number of uh, healed lesions in different places on this tongue. Um, there's still a little bit of um, a little bit of yellow discoloration, which may be traces of old, maybe just traces of old fibrin or scarring. Um, and you can see that. Um, uh, there's often this sort of concentric ring pattern, which uh, becomes more noticeable um, sometimes in some animals than others. So here we can see this, uh, a more advanced lesion. This is around day 20. Um, and you see these, these sort of concentric rings from the scarring. Um, if you look at this very closely, you can see the papillae that have regrown in the lesion area are not quite as uh, tall as the ones on the side of the tongue. And there's a, the, the area of the tongue where the epithelium has regrown is slightly shallower than the surrounding edges. So uh, a little uh, general comment then. In cattle and sheep, the tongue and mouth lesions are much easier to age than those on the feet. It is possible to get different lesion ages in the same animal, and that's um, uh, because there is a period of viremia that lasts for about four days when the virus is being uh, disseminated from the point of entry in the body, usually the upper respiratory tract, to the sites, the secondary sites in the body, such as the feet and teats and so on. And so during that four-day period, a virus can come out at different times and you can get uh, different lesion ages at different sites. Uh, foot lesion aging in ruminants is more difficult because of variable wear and secondary infections. So um, the secondary infections can certainly make it uh, more difficult to age the lesions. And also, um, especially in sedentary animals, uh, the epithelium may not uh, uh, be subject to so much wear and may not rub off, so you can get uh, epithelial tags lasting for longer periods of time. You can also age older hoof lesions using um, ridges on the claw, which move slowly down the claw as it regrows. And I think we've got a picture of that here, yes. So this is to show uh, growth arrest lines on pig hooves. So and uh, normally in, in, in the feet of animals, the lesion is at the coronary band, which is the junction between the normal skin and where the start of the hoof is. So you would have started with a, a blister, a big blister up here. And after that has um, burst and eroded, uh, you get the healing process that we've talked about. 
that because of the disruption to the growth of the horn, um, you get a separation. And as the new horn grows down, you can see where the old uh, injury was here. And the distance of um, that uh, separation line uh, from the coronary band can give you an indication of how old the lesion is um, for aging purposes. So as it says here, if, if the lesion is still at the coronary band, if it hasn't grown down, then you're normally talking about a lesion of less than a week old. Um, and then if you, if you can estimate the distance, so in this case it was about three millimeters, you can use that information together with knowledge that horn grows at about one to two millimeters per week in pigs, faster in young animals. And so if you add up uh, the week that it takes you to get uh, um, uh, beyond the coronary band and then the time for uh, three millimeter growth, you end up with a lesion that's going to be around 17 to 28 days old. So obviously this isn't um, a very accurate uh, way of le lesion aging, but it can give you approximate estimates for the ages. So I mentioned also that you could get different lesion ages in the same animal. And so this is an example of this in a cow's mouth, where we have a rather fresh two-day lesion because this is the big uh, blister that's just rupturing to the point of rupture here. So that makes it a day two lesion. Whereas if you look at some of these um, lesions on the gums, it's quite clear that they're older because they're, they're, they're still red raw. Uh, they've got smooth edges, so the epithelial um, tags have already been lost and they've got uh, fibrin present, quite a bit of fibrin in some cases. So they're certainly uh, a day or so older than the lesions on the tongue. When you're um, trying to estimate the time at which infection has come onto a farm, it's important to look at uh, as many animals as possible because what you're trying to find is the oldest lesion on the premises because that, um, will be present in the animal that was infected first, and that will give you the start of your time window uh, when infection came onto the farm. So a little note on accuracy of aging lesions. It's most accurate at the beginning, and as the lesions get older, it becomes increasingly difficult to age them accurately. So normally, if you take care over it, you can get about one day accuracy, plus or minus, up to around five days age of lesions. And thereafter, the accuracy diminishes. So we're talking about plus or minus three days until around 12 days old. After that, the estimates become much more approximate and it's quite difficult to be exact about the age, but you can still get um, uh, some useful uh, reference points as well as the fact that um, the accuracy of aging is not absolutely precise. It's very important though to be aware that um, you may miss the oldest case altogether um, if you have subclinical infections in some animals or if you don't inspect all the animals. So for example, if you had a disease in a flock of sheep, it might well be that the first sheep to be infected uh, didn't actually develop vis vesicular lesions. Perhaps they only had a mild signs and fever. And so that would lead you um, uh, to make a false estimate of, of when infection had actually arrived. And similarly, if you don't inspect all the animals, you may miss the ones that have the oldest lesions. So when you come to make your uh, time window for tracing, you have to err uh, very much on the side of caution. So I'd like to finish with that. I hope it's been um, helpful and I'd like to thank very much uh, many of my colleagues at EUFMD and at the Purbright Inst Institute who contributed lesion pictures. Thank you very much.